I've worked so hard to finally have the vanity I wanted completed that it was finally time to start tackling some of the smaller things in this bathroom to help bring everything full circle. Stick around if you want to see what I was able to achieve this week. Last week was baby shower week, so we had a lot going on as far as like getting things ready and stuff like that. So I decided just to take the week off and not do anything. This week though, we are going to start with paint samples because I need to paint all of these remaining walls. It's really not that many walls that need painting, so I figured I'd go ahead and knock that out. Also go ahead and add the new trim to the window, take care of that. But before we can do that, I'm gonna add some samples to the wall. I feel like these light bulbs are a little too yellow for my liking. I usually like using daylight bulbs. This just gives a little bit too much of a yellow tone for me. Uh, I may switch them out, I may not, it depends. I am going to see what the colors look like under these lights and then what they would look like under a daylight light to see which one I prefer the most. I picked up a couple of samples. They're very similar. They're very neutral. So we'll see which one I end up liking. I always make sure I do a big swatch so I can really visualize what that color looks like. This color is called Studio Clay. We'll wait for that to dry. Let's go with Roman Plaster. I'm gonna grab a different paintbrush or go wash this and then I'll come back to do the next color. While waiting on the samples to dry on the wall, I began removing all of the nails left behind from the old window trim. The bottom ledge trim piece was still in place, so I began removing that too. It took a little bit of effort, but I was able to remove it in several pieces. I took the measurement and shape of the old trim piece and transferred it over to a new 1x3 primed pine piece before attaching it to the windowsill using brad nails. I always like to do the middle top piece before attaching the sides because I feel like that usually gives me a better result of a more perfect miter. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and wood fill all of my holes and also go ahead and caulk all of my seams. Currently, our world has the most advanced technology that has ever existed. This technology is so advanced that you could easily access any information by just clicking a few buttons on the internet. For me personally, it's been a great help because over a year and a half ago, I didn't know anything about remodeling or building. But thanks to the internet and through trial and error, 
Here I am building things I've never been more proud of. But did you know that unfortunately that's not the only thing you can find on the internet these days? Which is why I wanted to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Aura. You can also find private personal information about yourself and others. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, to the marketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. Aura identifies those data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests as well as junk mail and telemarketing lists on your behalf. Aura's app includes almost every internet safety tool you'll need, including a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and even protects your devices from malware. Aura will give you a two weeks free trial if you sign up right now using my link. You'll be surprised at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. To avoid being one in every 15 people who become victims of identity fraud, go to aura.com slash Glenda Use the link down in the description or scan the QR code to start your free trial today. So it's day two of this week and working in the bathroom and I've decided on the color. I asked you guys which one was your favorite and a lot of you chose between this one and this one. This one being the lightest one and then this one being a little bit more gray toned. I personally really like this one because it was lighter. I felt it was light enough to complement the wall but not be too similar or too identical to the color of the tile or the grout. So the color that I'm gonna be using is called Roman Plaster. But before I can paint, I do have some crown molding I still need to remove, scrape off some additional paint that needs to come off that's kind of coming off. And then I do need to prep my trim that we applied yesterday. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started because we've got a lot to do in a short amount of time. I've mentioned this before, but if you wanted to create less dust, you could also take a damp cloth and remove the excess wood filler that way instead of sanding. You just have to be careful of not removing too much because it can easily remove more than what you want. When I removed the crown molding, it left behind quite a bit of caulking behind, as well as chipped and peeling paint, so I scraped it all off. Always remember to score with a knife before removing trim or molding to avoid as much damage as possible to the walls. From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep? I had to remove the shelves I had above the toilet in order to be able to paint and also cause the edges of the vanity to help get a seamless transition between the wood and the wall. I also went ahead and covered the edges to avoid getting any paint or splatter on them. For my paint, I wanted to try something new, so I took my paint and mixed it with some joint compound. I used about one to two parts respectively.
I've seen this technique being used quite a bit recently and I wanted to try it in this space. I thought it would complement the tile very well and the overall look I'm going for. Most people have been doing this with darker colors or doing multiple layers of different colors to get different contrasts which look really nice. My goal here was just to kind of knock down the orange peel texture. Although more time consuming than just painting it regular, it was overall super easy to apply on the walls and I made sure to go in different directions to really help build up that texture. It's hard to tell, but this is what it looked like up close. I showed you what the texture looks like up close a little bit better. Now that I've added the texture to it, I'm going to go back through and actually paint it this time. Ideally, if this wasn't a restroom, I honestly would have left it like this and done an additional coat of texture with the paint, but it leaves it very matte. And my only concern for that is the amount of moisture that comes with a bathroom. And I don't want to run into any risks later on for not having a paint that will kind of like repel all of the moisture, like satin and eggshell finishes have enough sheen to them that it'll kind of repel the water a little bit better than something that's matte or completely, completely shineless like this. Since I've already kind of gotten the texture that I'm more happy with, I'm going to go through and cut everything in and then I'm going to come back and just roll my paint and I should be done with that painting part and then we'll paint the trim. Me wonder. I feel like this frame here really shows how much brighter and even more spacious the room already feels with changing the color from what it was. It really makes me wonder. Ooh, I wonder. How come the trees gets untrust when it's cold? Once I was done painting the walls, I moved on to painting the window trim using an ultra pure white and a satin finish. Then I began sanding all of the wood trim and tongue and groove walls surrounding the toilet. After sanding, I caulked between each board to prep for paint. While I waited on that to dry, I moved on to painting some of the ceiling imperfections and then came back and did two coats of the same window trim paint. Using first a brush, followed through with a small foam roller to avoid any brush marks. Now that all the painting is done, it's time to move on to removing the old tub and replacing it. Stay tuned for the next video where I will be tackling that next. In the meantime, let's go over the total amount I spent this week and what my total cost for this renovation has been thus far. The last time we spoke, my total was $3,016.95, but since then, I've made additional purchases as well as returned a few items. I returned the black faucets I didn't end up using, the lift struts, and the wipe on poly, but then made purchases of screws, foam brushes, drill bits, plumbing stuff to connect the faucets, tile adhesive in a trowel, a roller latch, and additional hinges, bringing my total back to $3,053.34. 
Now this week I went ahead and purchased the paint samples, paint supplies, and the window trim for $67.29. Once I had selected the color I wanted, additional paint supplies added up to $85.43. I also bought the tile for the shower totaling $788.55. I also purchased a new shower head and bath faucet, a new toilet, the waterproofing membrane needed for the shower walls, and the tile for the floor totaling $782.92. I also bought paint for the window trim and additional painting supplies for $36.71, bringing our new total cost for the project to $4,814.24. I hope you found this information helpful. Stay tuned as we get super close to finishing this project. As always, I love y'all, be kind, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!